Hey, um, I am Monica Park. Um, I work at Alabama a and University, and I am part of a, um, collaborate, a, a collaborative group. Uh, I'm going to introduce our members first. Uh, Naomi Valdez, University of Texas, Rio Grande, Grand Valley. Diane McMahon, uh, is it Albany College of Maryland? I, please, I hope I didn't mispronounce that. But the three of us have a very similar um, presentation. We're all interested in how we're going to get faculty engaged and how we're going to do, do that by utilizing focus groups. Next slide. Okay. The interesting thing about all three of our campuses is there each one is, is different and unique as far as the students that we work with, uh, the sizes of the campus. So we're gonna use the uniqueness for our campuses to kind of help us uh, come up with three different perspectives as to how we're gonna maintain, how we're gonna get faculty engagement and try very hard to maintain faculty engagement. Next slide, please. So I am gonna start Again, I am Monica Clark from Alabama a and University. Next slide. <clears throat> My campus is, is fairly unique in itself. We are a historically HBCU campus, historically black campus. Um, we have a couple things that make us unique. First, we're historical, we are black. We're also rural. We are in the backdrop of Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, we have our own little special town called Noma, Alabama. And the crazy thing about it is that it's only literally like three buildings that's Noma, Alabama. Uh, but uh, we are very, very, very much in love with the fact that we're a little unique. We have about 6,000 students enrolled that's undergrad and graduate. We have relatively small classrooms um, and a lot of access to our students. And of course, I had to share our big bulldog. Uh, a very mean and aggressive mascot uh, down below. Next slide. When we were talking about faculty engagement, we we're looking at uh, some challenges, uh, some good things and bad things about how we can get or how I can get faculty engaged here at Alabama a University. Um, we utilize a lot of the fact that we are uniquely small and we uh, have access to our students, but we still face quite a bit of challenges as far as getting our students on board. So first let's go over some of our strengths. Again, we have small classroom sizes, relatively about 25 to 30 students in our classes. Um, we have support of our administration. Um, the last administration was extremely supportive. Um, our president wanted everything civically engaged on campus. We do have a new president this year, but he has shown that he also wants us to be 100% civically involved. We're just trying to figure out how to do that where we are successful. Uh, we do have the support of our SGA and our panel and council. Uh, we, uh, we have something similar to an engagement team. Uh, actually, it's called our civic engagement team. And that team consists of faculty, staff, our SGA president, our panel and president, um, and also our um, student activities director also sits on that team. So we do have student access. And our community engagement plan is part of the university, our university strategic plan. So that helps us and it gives us a little bit more of that overall university support. So I bet you're wondering if we have so much support, why are we having so, many, so much trouble? Well, there are problems that come with any group of students, but we are dealing with a lot of first generation um, students who are uh, who, who were not necessarily voters, but their parents are probably weren't voters. So they didn't come from a family structure of voting. Um, and because of that, it, it tends to pose us a challenge here on campus. One of the main challenges, <clears throat> not just with our students, but our faculty doesn't necessarily participate. Um, we have faculty members who are probably just like your campus, overworked and underpaid, as they would say. Uh, and so, you know, participating in any other activity can be seen, can, can, can seem like more work for our faculty members. So they're a little bit more hesitant to participate. Um, and also, they're just not as motivated to go outside the classrooms and work with different activities. When we have voting events on campus, we rarely see faculty at our voting events. Um, and all of this, we know, is a hindrance, especially if we want them to be talking about voting issues and, and civic engagement issues in their classrooms. Um, <clears throat> when we don't have a lot of faculty engagement, we tend to not have as much student engagement as well. 
Um, our students are just not that interested in the civic world here on this campus. We're trying to, we're trying to incorporate it. I'm hoping that everywhere they turn, they'll hear something about civic engagement and they'll want to participate. But that, um, as I've said over and over again, is, it, is, is troubling for us. We have little to no funding when it comes to civic engagement. Yes, our administration love us and they want us to continue to do our job, but there's no funding for it. They don't put any money into this. So a lot of what we do, we do based on grants or outside support and help. Next slide. So how is this program going to help? Um, this plan of action for Alabama and you know, I am very hopeful that um, I'll be able to submit this plan to our administration and actually try to get our faculty and staff more involved. The very first thing we did was a survey, thanks to Maddie for helping us put together a wonderful survey. And all three of the campuses did the same survey. I actually sent my survey out a little early. I sent it out to 25 um, of faculty members that I work personally with. And I received 12 back. And I used some of the information that I got back to kind of to kind of steer how I'm gonna go forward with, um, with other faculty and staff. In order for me to send something out to all faculty and staff, I do have to have permission from our provost. So I'm still waiting to get that permission to do the, the whole campus. Now, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna have focus groups. Um, based on the survey I sent out, one of the questions on the survey was, would you be interested in serving on a focus group to get more you know, more involvement from, you know, across the, board, across the board from all faculty members. I did have quite a few that said that they would. So we're gonna set up a focus group and that focus group will be selected from faculty who replied, I wanna be on the focus group. Um, probably no more than 10 faculty members on the focus group. Um, and we're gonna meet three to five times via Zoom this summer. Our faculty, they're already gone. And this is going to be a challenge, but I'm going to try really, really hard. Hopefully, we can get us some incentives to get our faculty to um, to get 10 faculty that are willing to meet with me several times this summer. So we're going to see. I'm thinking that's going to be my highest challenge, but hey, I'm in for it. Um, so once we get the faculty group together, we meet, we come up with a plan, then we'll actually write a plan of action, a faculty engagement plan of action. And that plan of action proposal is what we're going to submit to our provost to hopefully get the university's buy-in. So this is something that we can send out across campus and, and have high expectations for our faculty to be involved and, and put some incentives in there so that when faculty members are involved, you know, they can get whatever it is that they're seeking, whether that's a letter from the president, hours on to their um, trying to be tenured. So whatever they need, we want to be able to, to you know, kind of equal it out uh, and make this beneficial for our faculty members. So that's the Alabama e and plan of action. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Diane, who is going to talk about her university's policies, I mean, uh, plan. Next. Can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, okay. Um, I'm from Allegheny College of Maryland. It's a community college. It's very small. It, it's located in the mountains of Western Maryland. There's a map and it's it's far away from all the things that we call it downstate. And uh, we're in the mountains, it's very rural. So that's what it looks like there. Next. Oops. There we go. It's a community college. And um, just to throw in, we have different challenges because of that. Trans transportation is difficult. We only have a bus that runs once every hour and it's a small bus. So imagine that, you know, with classes and um, broadband is a real issue. Not having broadband and connection to the internet, it's a, a really big issue for our students. Um, in our area, it's supposedly the 
highest level of poverty in Cumberland, Maryland, where we're located. Um, we only have to about 2,400 students full-time and part-time. 92% receive federal aid for low level of income. And we only have a very small faculty, about 95 full-time faculty and about 50 part-time. And our mascot is Trojan, but I like Monica's better, but we have a Trojan. Next. So um, when I listened to Monica, I thought, wow, we have a lot. It's very similar. And it was great working with our team because we learned a lot from each other. But one thing that's a little bit different is we did go through the Carnegie engagement classification, which really helped us because it put a definition on what we were doing. And community engagement and civic engagement, it's sort of like shady words that people are always trying to get their head wrapped around. So it was good whenever we did that. One of the first things that we did was get a definition. And like Monica, we're in the strategic plan. So we're tracking it and reporting it to the board and, and that's important. And we also have it embedded in our general education learning outcome. And that is um, for, faculty, it's something that you put in your syllabus and then you tie your assignments into the general education learning outcome. So it's like a direct connect that you actually assess and track. And we have a small bit of money, not much, which is one third of my, of my uh, position is dedicated to this with the College to Community Partnership Center. And the rest, three quarters, I teach sociology. So we do have faculty and student awards for community engagement, which really promotes it on campus and we track it. Um, challenges are that we're so small that people are really, really tied into the community, but we're siloed and we don't report out what we're doing. So we don't track it well and people don't know what everyone else is doing. Um, like Monica said, it's just another level of task to record this and assess it. So people are you know, hesitant to, to even say that they do it because it's more work. And then specific to us is we're in an area where we're bordering on four different states. So imagine that voter information, registration dates, everything is changing all the time. So being in touch with all that different information, that's a challenge. Next, thanks, Maddie. So we have not yet put out a sur the survey. The survey is gonna help a lot that we developed in our group and I'm so thankful for it. But what we need to do before that is really get buy-in for it. And there's different committees on campus and faculty senates and committees that we can have them look to over the survey, maybe change it, add something a little bit to it for their own tracking purposes. And hopefully that'll get a little bit higher level of engagement. Um, I think just like Monica said, incentives for the focus group is would be huge. When we did the Carnegie classification, we were able to have a study group, a reflection group, and we were able to give like $500 for each faculty person that participated. And it really got a higher level of engagement and people involved with spreading that information around campus. Um, so we're gonna do that. Eight to 10 faculty members for that group would be perfect. Meeting on Zoom beforehand would be great. And then have the, uh, the group decide on the survey, delivering it to all faculty members and then to create a plan. And not only voter registration, but education also, because you can do that right in the class. And then finally have a proposal, like Monica said, and spread it out and track it and assess it. And that's good. Thanks, Maddie.
And that's me. And now, Naomi's going to talk from Texas. Thanks, Naomi. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> Can you hear me okay? Yes, awesome. Okay, so my name is Naomi Valdez, and I'm a program coordinator out of student activities here at UTRGV. And um, I've been in my position since April of 2021. And so let me give you some background on our campus. So we have a campus of over 31,000 students, and we kind of range across the whole bottom border of Texas, the like lowest, the lowest tip of Texas to uh, Rio Grande Valley. So we say that it goes from Rio Grande Valley to South Padre Island, over 120 miles of, um, of land. Our main campuses though are in Edinburgh and in Brownsville. Um, and that track is about an hour between campuses. And so um, just some other information about our campus is that um, it's a mainly Hispanic uh, location, geographically 94%. 94% of our um, regular population here in, in, the, um, in the valley are Hispanic along with about 92% of our students coming from the Valley and are Hispanic. So um, it makes UTRGV one of the largest Hispanic serving institutions in the nation. Um, just some other information about the geographic area, the median household income for uh, families is about $38,000 and about 62% uh, of our undergraduate students are Pell recipients. Um, so when we think about um, our population here in the Valley, there is some food insecurity, transportation issues. Um, this is an area where a lot of students are born, raised, and stay in this area. So these are their communities. They end up raising their own children in this area. And so um, really pushing for civic engagement is one thing that I think is really important because they end up staying in this area and you know raising their own families. And so it's really important for us to I guess, uh, try to incorporate civic learning and civic engagement uh, where they are, which is uh, ho hopefully at the university or in the school systems. You can, next slide, please. So some of our strengths and challenges here at UTRGV, I uh, put, put one of our posters there, um, but if you go to the next slide, I can talk a little bit more about it. So our strengths, um, so we hire our student workers for Civic Engagement Alliance. Many of our students are work study eligible. So we do hire about seven students to work uh, for the, the student organization that we call the Civic Engagement Alliance. And they can work up to 19 hours a week. Um, and we see the majority of their work during the, the, the season of civic holidays, as well as during um, during the spring when we had some of our, um, they weren't debates, they were like, kind of like um, open houses with some of the um, candidates that were running for governor. They came down to the Valley. Um, the other thing that we have as a strength is our Vaquero Vote Initiative. Uh, so this has been a long standing initiative uh, between governmental relations office and office or the Department of Student Life. And so we have staff members that you know, have been at the university for a long time working at these different offices that assist in you know, ensuring that we have polling locations, ensuring that we have you know, the, the different um, reminders go out about voting on campus and things like that. I do want to go back and talk a little bit about the history of UTRGV because we don't have to go back on the slides, but in, in our minds, um, UTRGV has only been around for about five or six years. Prior to that, um, the university was two university. It was UT Pan America and then UT Brownsville. And so um, a couple of years ago, they decided to combine those two universities into one. And so, um, they have that history to the, the university has a history of having two different campuses, but now bringing them together, it has provided some challenges, 
with a very decentralized university. So there's some folks that only work in Brownsville and some folks that only work in Edinburgh. And then there's some folks like myself who travel back and forth between the two locations. And um, so sometimes things can seem very decentralized where you know one hand doesn't know what the other hand is doing. Or, um, you know, and I'm kind of like that connector because I am going back and forth and I'm able to see, you know, where, you know, where the plans are for the polling location in one city and the other city and uh, making sure that our reminders for you know both the Hidalgo County elections and the Cameron County elections are happening and students are aware of that. Some other challenges that we have are just like the voter laws here in Texas, making sure students are aware of what they need to bring um, to, to the polling location when, when they're able to vote. And then, like I said before, student population, is, our concerns are sometimes transportation, as well as um, you know, students knowing what they're what they're voting on. Next slide, please. So our action plan is very similar to Diane's and Monica's, and I'm so glad glad that they went ahead of me because they. I even learned some information about Carnegie and you know the award system that Monica has set up. So that, that's really awesome. Um, we have a long-standing program with Vaquero's Vote um, in the Civic Engagement Alliance, but really we we don't have a lot of faculty members that are assisting in um, disseminating some of the information that we have about civic engagement and uh, voting on campus. So we really do want to get our faculty members involved. And so um, our action plan to get our faculty involved first starts with our survey. We want to get that approved by our leadership. Um, and once we get that, uh, that survey that we worked on with Monica, um, Maddie, and uh, Diane, then we can go ahead and send it out to um, the different faculty members. I really want to hit the core curriculum faculty members because so many of our students are taking those, you know, history one, history two, um, English courses, biology courses. So I really feel like that would be the bulk of the, ma the majority of our students will be seeing those professors. So I want to see um, what kind of information, what kind of thoughts that those faculty members have about civic engagement in the classroom. And then uh, we'll conduct two, two focus groups with about 10 to 12 faculty members. And my goal is to really get faculty members who aren't already talking about civic engagement in the classroom, um, just to see why they haven't been uh, very, I guess, talkative to their students about civic engagement. And so that's one of the things that I, I personally want to see is um, see what these faculty members need and then after that, conduct some interviews with a couple of professors and summarize our findings. So that's my action plan. The next slide. So I'm going to talk a little bit also about our focus groups. Um, so each co-designer is taking. Oh, we can go back. Not there yet. <laughs> each design, each co-designer is taking the lead at their university to move along the survey and the focus groups according to you know where things fall in, in the season that we are right now. Uh, focus groups can range in size depending on the responses from the faculty members. Um, so like Monica said earlier, she's going to ask the folks that took the survey if they want to be part of the focus group. I may take a different route. It's really up to the different um, co-designer to figure out how they want to invite folks to the focus group. And then we're also you know, working on possibility of having some funding and incentives for the focus groups as well. Next slide. What we're hoping to get out of this project is really to get some more information from the faculty. Um, so how to get them more involved in civic activities, uh, find out more about faculty position on, on civic responsibilities. Like, is that something that they feel like they wanna talk about in the classroom? Why they don't wanna talk about it? Uh, what are some barriers to talking about um, civic responsibilities in the classroom? We also want to seek their advice and their input and just overall increase faculty engagement so that um, you know, we can have faculty's opinions and support in some of the projects that we're doing and um, also to help facilitate voter education registration. 
So those are our different goals and outcomes for this project. Next slide. So like um, Diane said earlier, we are using a similar survey in April. We worked together with Maddie in developing questions on this survey. And really the themes that came out um, from the survey and our conversations about the survey were connection to civic engagement, including civics in the classroom, some of the barriers that uh, faculty members face when talking about civics, and then resources needed and possibly incentives. So we do have the link to the survey there as well. And you can go ahead and click on it. Maddie? We tried to keep it very short. We did ask for um, the name in the department. They don't have to fill that out, but really going down here, you can see that we try to make it very quick and easy with the scale, um, asking them how they are familiar with local issues, how confident they feel, some yes or no questions about did they know about our on-campus voting locations, and then you know what are some barriers. So this is a survey that we created earlier and that we would be dispersing out to, um, to the different faculty members. Okay, go back to the presentation. Next slide, please. All right, this is gonna, I think Diane is speaking next about our timeline. So if you go to the next slide, Matt, Maddie, thanks. So um, right now we're on summer break and, um, and we know from our conversations what we're gonna have to do will vary across our different climates. Um, there's a lot of a talk about getting permission and buy-in from faculty before we even start out. And, um, and with the idea that summer is a downtime, think about how we can start back strong in the fall and one way we could do that is set up our activity dates now, what we plan on doing, consult with faculty that we know are more likely to help us. We always have that inner circle and meet with them on Zoom in the summer a couple times and then um, just really designate eight to 10 people that we could maybe personally even ask to participate in. And I think funding, if, if this grant that's coming out might be applied in this way toward a funding incentive, that might really, really help. So that's the last thing I was gonna say about that. Next slide. And so does anybody have any questions or need more information? 